Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. This morning we are going to take a look at um, Luke chapter 10 verses 19. I never really do much about the, our enemy as the Bible calls them and um, because I really don't like focusing on him much. I just want to bring you uh, to your awareness about him, how he works. I did a couple of studies about him before when I was doing a study about the kingdoms uh, so that you can understand which kingdom you're a part of and uh, what are the principles that governs each uh, kingdom. We know that in the kingdom of darkness, we know the principle that governs that is fear. And um, uh, we saw the entrance of fear when the um, when our forefather and mom uh, uh, sinned, when the, when God came to spend His time with them, as it was their custom, the Scripture said, He said we were afraid, and so we see that the entrance of fear came, and that is the uh, primary um, way by which that uh, kingdom operates. And then we were introduced to our Lord Jesus and our God, and we see that. This kingdom is governed by love. And we know that um, as I begin to study more and more about the word, I see that it was love that caused God to do everything. It was love that caused Jesus to give up everything. It was love that caused the Holy Spirit to also to uh, vacate the heavens, if you will, to come to occupy the earth, to be with us and empower us. And we know that it was love that governed all of their behavior. And we saw that it was fear and hatred and um, all of those things governed the kingdom of darkness. And those that are a part of it, the Bible calls them the sons of disobedience. Those that are part of the kingdom of God are called the sons of God. So we see uh, that that's the difference or the differentiation or the difference between the two kingdoms. So let's take a look at what I entitled our enemy or the enemy. But the Bible tells us that he is the enemy to us, and he has been that from uh, the onset. We see that in the Garden of Eden. But here we see, Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and overall the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be by any means hurt you. So we know that, number one, he is classified as the enemy by God and by our Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the enemy of God's creation. The Bible tells us that we are the apple of God's eye, and that means we are one of the sensitive part of his body, and the enemy is always trying to, if you will, poke God in the eye because I am the apple of his eye. So he does that by deception. That is the tool by which he deceives men, cause them to fear, and then he's able to exercise dominion and authority over them. The Bible tells us that he is a prince of this air, and that is an important uh, distinction about him, because we know that in this earth that news and everything, the TV, the radio, everything, the music, all of those are governed by the air and by the prince of the air. And because he is the prince of the air, he wants to control the air or the air waves, if you will, because he knows that once he controls that, he then controls the message. And when he controls the message, he begins to program those that are listening in those arenas, we see that social media and all of these things are by way of uh, waves and, and airwaves, if you will. And so he is the prince of that. The Bible tells us that he is the, um, the enemy of the Christian. It calls him the accuser of the brethren. And these are some of the type, type titles, if you will, that he has. But the Bible tells us that he's not invincible. He's not all-powering. In fact, the Bible tells us that you have more power than him, and that you can defeat him in Christ and using the Word of God. And we see examples of that when he came to Jesus Christ. 
The Bible tells us that Jesus said, it is written, and guess what? The devil has been in church quite a long time because he also quoted the scripture, but he misquoted the scripture. So that is how you, he was trying to deceive Jesus Christ because that's all he knows. But Jesus Christ came back and said, hey, bro, it is written. And that's how we know that he can be defeated and so that you and I have authority over him. But the Bible tells us to be sober. It also says be uh, vigilant. It says because your adversary, the devil, it identifies who he is. And it identifies the people that he works with in the previous scripture. But we know that the adversary, the devil, has a lion. So he's not a real thing. You know that Jesus Christ is the lion of Judah. And this guy, all he does is tries to copy what God has done, the original stuff, because he can't do anything else outside of that. He has to copy God. So he roams around like a lion. Um, he says, he walks about seeking whom he may devour. So we know that he has a presence here on the earth and that he has been walking here for a while. And I believe that when, after the major fall, and when he tried to um, usurp God's uh, rulership, he ran into a person by the name, an angel by the name of Gabriel. And apparently they took him out. And they had a war in the heavens, the Bible tells us. And that war in the heavens, I believe that when the angels fell on the earth, they caused the first ice age. And that's when the Holy Spirit showed up and started to melt the ice, it says, that was there. And so the enemy, um, he was there before, and he saw because he had no place in heaven, so he was here, his boys were here. And then God comes right here and recreates the earth, because the Bible tells us that the earth is made to be inhabited. And so it was damaged, and we see in Genesis God reconstructing the earth, and then he places his prized possession on the earth called man. The enemy is watching this. He is jealous because God just made this creature the god of this earth and this realm, and he got upset. He came up with a plan to get it back, uh, to get it from him. He succeeded in that plan, and when Jesus showed up, the Bible says Jesus was the last Adam. So the first Adam lost. The last Adam kicked his butt, if you will. And when he kicked his butt, he uh, took away a lot of his power when he died and resurrected. So um, and Jesus Christ restored that to us. The Bible says that this character is walking around. And he's here, as I mentioned to you from that time, and he's walking around here and he's checking out the scene and seeing who he can influence, who he can deceive, because as I mentioned, he makes a statement to Jesus Christ. He's a God of this earth. He says, all this has been given to me. And uh, he takes Jesus in a high place and he shows him all of these was given to me. And um, when was it given to him? When Adam gave it to him. And Jesus said, the Bible tells us that Jesus went down where he lived and took it from him. Actually, made an open show to all his people, all his his crew, and then left, and uh, then he gave that to you and I. And I opened the scriptures with that. So we see that this enemy of ours, he, the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. That's why we have Jesus as our high priest, as our lawyer, our defense lawyer, if you will, in heaven, so that when he comes to accuse us, because he's roaming around to see whom he may devour, and whom he may accuse. And as he begins to accuse us, our lawyer uh, begins to stand up. And I love the fact that Jesus Christ is our lawyer. Um, he's our defense attorney. He's provided by the state, if you will. So you and I don't have to come up with money, if you will. So if you're poor, you still have a lawyer. If you're rich, you still have a lawyer. The same lawyer, in fact. And so... He does all the pro bono cases on our behalf for free. And so Jesus Christ is there on your behalf, 
because he has defeated this guy and he has given you the power to do it. And so it tells us how we could defeat him. It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Be humble before God. Recognize that it is God and through God and his power that you're going to defeat him. You cannot do it on your own because if you are stepping out in the flesh, you he owns you. And he, if you step out in the flesh, man, he will uh, toss you around like a rag, rag doll. But you have to recognize that Jesus and God is the one that says, when you're street weak, he is strong. Jesus is my strength. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer. He is my God. It tells us that we ought to resist this character called the devil, and he will flee. So he doesn't have all authority over you. You can resist him through God as you submit to God. And in your submission, your humbleness, your humbleness of spirit and soul and so forth, and your belief and your all of those things that you humble yourself unto God, you can defeat this person that is called the enemy. The Bible tells us that we could get dressed and how to defeat him. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, that you put on a couple of things, some uh, 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 garments, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So then if you can put it on, that means that you can win. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It means that we can beat him in Christ. We can stand and look at him and, as the Bible says, humble ourselves and he will walk away from us because he recognizes that who is greater than, he tells us greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Who is he that is in the world? It is he, the devil, who goes around roaming the world as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Rejoice not uh, against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. I shall arise when I sit in darkness. The Lord shall be a light unto me. And I've talked to you guys about that before. So when we fall, it says, even though, the scripture says, and even though a righteous man stumbles, tells us that God is there to pick him up. Even when we stumble, God is there. And so this guy, the world gives him a lot of attention because it is his place. But in the kingdom of God, we don't focus on him that much. We focus on the principle, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right thinking, his right belief, his right life. Yeah, all of these things, the rightness of God. And all the things that other people in the kingdom is so focused on that Jesus warns us not to be covetous over that, that it tells us that we will become more than conqueror. And so I wanted to bring this attention to this gentleman, to you, that the Bible calls um, our enemy, the enemy. And so the enemy has a name. He has a couple of... Um, I guess you could say uh, um, levels of uh, demons and and uh, cohorts that work with him. Behold, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemies, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so we have power over all of his uh, his department over his kingdom as. We are empowered by God himself, by the Holy Spirit, and by Jesus, and by the Word. For the Bible tells us that God holds his Word above his name. And so, because he holds his Word above his name, we know we can use that very same thing and cause some damage to the enemy as Jesus did. It is written. And we have a couple of other things at our disposal, the Bible says, the name of Jesus. At that name, every knee shall bow. And I always say, every situation will bow in that name. We know also that the blood of Jesus Christ is something that is powerful and that enemy of ours cannot handle 
that love. We know that when uh, he recognizes the power of that blood and what it did to his kingdom, we understand why he loses his mind and he's not able to focus. And so the scripture tells us that this is our enemy. He's out there. And I try not to, as I said, spend a lot of time on him uh, because uh, more importantly to us is that we have to learn the righteousness of God. We have to learn, seek you first the kingdom of God and learn about all of his principles and his responsibilities that we have within the kingdom, the titles that we carry, the offices, the responsibility. And as we begin to learn about his rightness, uh, this is his righteousness. And that's our assignment to when it comes to the kingdom of God. And then our assignment when he has given to us about when we focus on the enemy's kingdom, the Bible says we ought to walk in there and lay hands on the sick and just become radical in the name of Jesus Christ and turn his kingdom upside down. Jesus did it. Paul did it. The disciples did it. Men and women uh, of, uh, of the kingdom of God, they do it. They turn his kingdom upside down. And that is why we have to do the same until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the just shall live by faith, and we walk by faith and not by sight.